Teaching English Radio India. A radio series for teachers of English. Brought to you by the British Council. Hello and welcome again to our series for teachers of English. Today's topic is presenting and practicing grammar. And to help us, we'll be meeting some teachers from different parts of India who have lots of ideas to share. I'm Priya from Mumbai. I'm Mahesh from Mumbai. I'm Geeta from Trivandrum. My name is Deena. I'm from Madikeri in Karnataka. Today we are asking how we can help our students when we need to focus on grammar. Each chapter of the textbook will probably contain a specific grammar point. But it is not always clear to teachers how to introduce and practice this point, as the textbook may only contain a text and one or two fill-in-the-gap exercises. These are not enough for the student to really understand the grammar. So we need to use other approaches. There are many different ways to present new grammar to our students. Teachers Priya, Geeta and Mahesh describe an approach that works well with large classes and this is the one we are going to discuss today. Here's Priya. So the stages in a typical grammar lesson would be uh, the teacher first presents the language, then the students practice it and later on they go on to produce the language. So it's present, practice, produce. PPP. Priya describes the PPP approach. First, we present, then we get our students to practice, and then we help them to produce the new language, to use it. Let's look at these stages. What does presenting involve? Should teachers start with a set of rules? No, says Priya. There is a more natural way to do it that will involve the students and keep them interested. Yeah, in the traditional approach, the teacher presents the grammar rule. She gives it to the students and then some exercises are given to check their understanding where, and they're made to write the sentences. Whereas in the um, modern approach, if I may use the word, uh, the sentences come from the students and then they deduce the grammar rules. Teacher Mahesh also says, don't start with the rules. Let them talk first, use the language and then become aware of grammar structures. When we teach the students, we also liken it to the way a mother teaches language to a child. We don't uh, bog them down with rules and do's and don'ts. We just get them to talk. And as they start getting more friendly with English, they realize the grammar that comes along with the language. It seems that talking about grammar immediately can bore or confuse the students. Instead, many teachers try to set up a conversation with their students, which encourages them to suggest sentences in a natural way. So Zishan is there also, another boy. So what extra you do besides studying? I get early in the morning and, and late in the night <laughs> I read. Okay, fine. Very nice. Very nice. Um, Rather than saying that, you know, I'm going to teach you such and such grammar rule today, she puts it in a context to make it interesting. So that is one way to elicit words or get the students to say the words rather than the teacher telling them everything. So the teacher elicits ideas from the students and gives some correct examples of sentences with the grammar being taught. And what happens next? Geeta describes the steps that she follows. And then um, she writes it on the board to give them a clear structure and then she can probably do some drilling um, and then the students can practice it among themselves, probably in pairs first, then in groups. Let's just review the steps that Geeta mentions. She says, Involve the students from the start. Elicit their ideas to present the new language in an interesting way. Write sentences on the board to show the structure and spelling. Once they know the meaning and the use, you model the language, saying it clearly,
and the whole class repeats. Geeta calls this drilling. Now they can practice in pairs or groups. So we've heard about presenting and practicing. Later, students will use or produce the new grammar with help from their teacher. Once they are very sure about the structure, then they can uh, come and present it to the whole class and the teacher can take a feedback on it. She can do a bit of uh, error correction also so that she, make, she can make sure that all of them have got the structure right. Let's hear some specific examples of ways of presenting grammar. Yeah, so if I'm teaching them simple present tense, uh, I'll start my class by asking them, uh, by asking one student, what time do you get up? To which the answer might be, I get up at 6 a.m. Priya continues by asking other learners in the class about their daily routine. Something that they do daily, brush their teeth, have bath, leave for work. Uh, have lunch, watch TV, go to bed. And um, for a visual reinforcement, I put up the uh, target question on the board, which will be, what time do you? We asked Priya to imagine she had some students in front of her. And being an experienced teacher, she was able to do this very well. Let's listen in. Vishal, what time do you get up? To which Vishal will reply, I get up at 6 a.m. Okay, now can you ask Ramesh? So then Vishal will ask Ramesh. Ramesh, what time do you have breakfast? So Ramesh replies, I have breakfast at 7.30 a.m. Then I ask Ramesh to ask a question to Vaishali. And I can also use gestures to point out the student has to ask the other person by using my hands so that I don't have to talk. Once I've done that a couple of times, the students will get a hang of it and they'll start asking questions. After some drilling, everyone can say, what time do you get up? And what time do you have breakfast? Priya then moves to a practice activity. And I drill the structure and then I'll ask them to go and find out five people in the class and ask them to note down what time do you get up, what time does each one have their lunch, what time does each one leave for school, what time does each one return home, something like that. And I'll ask the students to practice this in pairs or in groups. You are listening to Teaching English Radio India, a radio series for teachers of English. Brought to you by the British Council. Today our topic is presenting and practicing grammar. And teachers are describing one way of introducing a new grammar structure. It involves the PPP approach. Presenting, then practicing, and finally students producing the new grammar in a real situation. We heard Priya presenting the present simple tense in a way that her students could understand and enjoy without a lecture on grammar. Now here is another example from Mahesh. To introduce the present continuous, he invites students to look out of the school window and report. Bharati, look out of the window and uh, tell me what you see. So she might say something like, a woman standing. So I say, a woman is standing. Can you say that again, Bharati? So a woman is standing. So one by one, all students uh, try and frame sentences about something that they can see that is currently happening, that is going on right now. Mahesh explains that he also uses pictures cut from newspapers or magazines which show different actions. He shares these around groups of students who then discuss what they see using the present continuous. Another idea comes from Geeta. If you can't find newspaper cuttings or magazines, the teacher can act as a model and the teacher can mime a lot of actions and ask the children to say that, what am I doing right now? She can show a mime as she's brushing her teeth and the children will say that, you are brushing your teeth. Now the teacher combs her hair and the teacher children will say, okay, now you're combing your hair. Using discussion or mime or pictures, Geeta gets her students interested and soon, She's got some sentences with the grammar she's teaching. 
she writes up key sentences on the board and this is now an opportunity to ask the students what they notice about the form. In this case, it is the present continuous which uses the verb to be plus ing. So then she can write those sentences on the board and show that there is an ing. She can just circle that ing um, a part of it in a red or in a different color and then show that, you know, there is a pattern, you know. There is a pattern and it is present continuous. Writing the structure on the board also helps the visual learners in the class. There are some people who like to learn through visuals. So if they have the structure on the board and if we use different chalks to highlight the pattern, the students who learn through visual aids will understand better and retain the structure in their mind. So students now know what the meaning is. They know the form and now we want them to make sure they know how to say the new sentences with the right intonation and pronunciation. A choral drill can help here. What does this involve? Well, here's Dina and then Priya. Drilling means giving the students a chance to be able to listen to you, say the word correctly and repeat it after you. Drilling should be done with a lot of belief. So if I am going to drill a structure, firstly, I have to be very confident about where I'm going to pause, um, you know, where I'm going to stress and I should have a practice before I go, on, go into my class and start drilling. So if I am drilling this sentence in my class, I would like a tube of fresh mint toothpaste and some soap. This is a fairly big, a fairly long sentence. So I need to break it into parts so that I drill it effectively and the students learn the structure. I think drills must be kept short so that it's interesting for the students and it doesn't become very monotonous. Following drilling, teachers usually organize some pair and group work using the new grammar structure. They also ask students to write down some key sentences to help them remember the grammar point. Now your students have had lots of practice, which of course was carefully planned and managed by the teacher. Later, in the same session or in another lesson, they can move on to use the language more freely. In this final production stage, the students will be much more in control and the teacher's role will be more of an organizer. They might go on to tell a story, have a discussion, solve problems, interview other students or even act out a short dialogue. There are many possibilities. Sadly, we are out of time. So I'll just go through some of the points in today's program on presenting and practicing grammar. We heard that one approach is in three steps, often called PPP. Presenting, then students practicing, and finally producing the language more freely. It isn't the only way, but it is useful to know about it. By setting up a realistic context, we can make the meaning of new grammar clear and memorable. Use discussion, mime, pictures, or a personal story. Don't start off with a set of grammar rules. Instead, focus on language and encourage your students to suggest example sentences in a natural way. When they are clear about the meaning, write key sentences on the board to point out the correct form. In a large class, a choral drill is helpful to get the pronunciation right. And then students can move on to practicing in pairs and groups. Later, teachers can introduce many activities to allow students to use the new grammar more freely. I'd like to end by repeating teacher Priya's quote. Tell me and I'll forget. Show me and I may remember. Involve me, I'll understand. So I think the key to all our grammar lessons should be involving our students as much as we can. So let's keep our students involved. It's goodbye from me, Pibash Dash, and happy teaching.